Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. It's been a while, so I thought maybe it's time to to start another engine or a model build. And what I'd really like is a little boiler to run my Myford Boy engine I've just completed, and numerous other engines and a couple of others that I've got planned. Something that I can probably put a water pump on, something with a pressure gauge and a water glass, and something with a decent long-term boiler so that we can give things a good run so hours of playtime my friend John Creasy my friend John Creasy donated a piece of copper tube which is three inches almost three inches diameter it's 72 about 74 mil, 74.4 mil or something and it's about 180 millimeters long so that's the starting point I've gone through in a CAD program not so much to procrastinate although that is a factor but mostly to sort of give me some idea where to put all the holes if you watch my latest metal spinning video you'll probably find or you'll probably know that I've made two little copper end plates now without thinking this through I drilled three holes <coughs> in the plate to fasten the plate onto the spinning mandrel probably I should have done that one that one and that one rather than that one that one and that one and then I could have had a hole on each side blocked off for for steam ports and for a dome and for for a bush for an outlet. But that didn't happen. So we've got a tube missing here and a tube missing here. And that'll be alright if we put them in. that's what we've got and that should be just the thing now all this assembly slides into the into the barrel like such and that's what we've got We've got a hole in the outside above the plate here in the smoke box, which will be the steam outlet. We've got two holes here, which will be the water gauge, and another hole here for a pressure gauge, and a hole in the bottom for a water pump, and probably it needs some kind of boiler drain, but I'm not sure about that yet. It's also got a hole for looking at the fire. It won't be an actual fire hole door. It's probably more cosmetic, but that's going to do the job nicely with a little door on it. Probably just to put a match in to light it. There's a steam dome out of phosphor bronze. Make all the fittings out of bronze, I think. There's a little dome there for the for the pressure relief valve. And there'll be a, a spun probably a spun or a cast, more likely a spun cover to go on top, and some cladding around to to make it so we don't burn our fingers quite so often so that's sort of what we're looking at a lot of these things need a little bit of a 
nutting out and working out as we go. I probably have got a piece of inch brass tube there for a chimney. I think it's too big. It's going to let too much heat out uh, all at once. So I'm probably going to go for something smaller, a piece of three quarter or something, if I can fish around in the junk pile and find it. It might be copper rather than brass, but that shouldn't be an issue. There's a hole in there that fits over the pressure relief valve after it screws in so that that's actually out the, out the top there. So steam fittings are going to be pretty much standard LBSC pattern, a water gauge and some fittings and maybe a stainless steel superheater and a couple of plain bushes probably with plugs in them for, until that gets tested. I will probably be testing it to about 80 psi with a working pressure of probably 40 which is quite an enthusiastic little boiler it should handle that sort of pressure okay very easily I think it's quite solidly made anyway that's a bit of a look at the drawings and what we're going to do feedbacks more than appreciated but so I think this design mightn't be too too shabby at all. If anyone's got any better ideas as we go along, put them in the comments. I'd be fairly interested to find out. And we'll see how it works. Let's go over the bench and get started. Well, here we are. The first thing that really presents itself is that one end of this tube is square. And the other end not so much. So the first thing we really need to do is mark this square and true it up. There's a couple of ways to do this. We could make a mandrel between centers in the lathe and turn it. We made a wooden mandrel to fit this end and one to fit this end with a center in it and set it up and machined this nice and square and, and straight. That's not bad. Uh, in fact, that's probably one of the better ways to do it. But getting it to run through and getting it so that we're not scared of it when it's spinning in the lathe, because it's quite a big piece of stuff, is going to be one of those things we're not so keen about. So what I'm going to do, I've blued the top of it and something that's happened and here's a little caution the tip of the day is that my Dikem bottle has actually dissolved the paintbrush so the end of it's fallen off not much use there but there is the end of a paintbrush actually in my Dikem which I'm not going to rescue the way it is. Probably there's a couple of ways you could you can actually mark this out. First one is just to get a piece of paper and wrap around there. The paper, just cartridge paper, should be nice and square. And if you wrap this around here so that it fits and so that the ends actually line up, whereas they don't quite there, but just a little bit, that's worse. going the wrong way there. Take a little bit to get it lined up. And when you do get it lined up, it's probably fairly easy just to scribe a line around there. And when we've done that, we can open that and file that down to match. So I'm going to go and do that and come back and we'll have a bit of a look at it. So 
So quite a bit while later, I've got this somewhere near square. That's not bad. It doesn't rock, which is the most important thing. And it's square on the bench to within heaps close enough for this job. So that's that job done. This job, this end, I've still got a fraction of a bit of a rock in it, and I might, I might just. Gosh, I'm tongue-tied today. But I might just give that a bit more attention and take the burrs off him. And in the next video, we'll probably start to prepare these two plates, drill them and bore them and all those sort of things, get them ready to go. And start marking this out for the, for the holes. So that's the next job. Thanks for watching, guys and girls, and more soon. Subscribe and like and all that sort of stuff. Leave a comment. There's people out there who tend to know a lot more about this than I do. I know that and I'm just sort of, it's my first personal boiler design. I think it's going to be alright. It looks pretty solid and I think all the holes are in the right, in the right place. But leave a comment if you've got any feedback and be kind to each other.